Hi and hello. Welcome to another session of Beginner's Bible Discovery. So in this session, we are going to do a bit of a background study on a recurrent reference in other parts of the Bible. I've decided to follow the leading of the Lord and cover this here because it is actually a reference that will come up in our next set of Bible readings. So without further ado, let us go through an account in the book of Genesis together. All right, so let's have a look here at Genesis chapter 18. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's read together. Let's see what we have here. And the Lord appeared unto him, the him would be Abraham, right? In the plains of Mamre. And he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day, verse two. And he lifted up his eyes and looked. And lo, three men, interestingly, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground. Verse three, and said, my Lord, if now I have found a favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee from thy servant. Verse four, let a little water, I pray you be fetched and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Verse five, and I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort ye your hearts. After that, ye shall pass on, for therefore are ye come to your servant. And they said, so do as thou hast said. Verse six, and Abraham hastened into the tent unto Sarah and said, make ready quickly, three measures of fine meal, knead it and make cakes upon the hearth. And Abraham ran unto the herd and fetched a calf tender and good and gave it unto a young man and he hasted to dress it, this eight. And he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree, and they did eat. Verse 9, and they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. 10, and he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door which was behind him, 11. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women, verse 12. Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself, saying, Am I waxed? After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also? Verse 13. The Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. All right, 15. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laughed not, <laughs> for she was afraid. And he said, nay, but thou didst laugh, 16. And the men rose up from thence and looked toward Sodom. So now we see where this is going. Eh? This is our topic for today. And Abraham went with them to bring them on the way, 17. And the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation 
and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. 19. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. 20. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, 21, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is come unto me. And if not, I will know. 22. And the men turned their faces from thence and went toward Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. 23. And Abraham drew near and said, Will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Twenty four. Peradventure, there be fifty righteous within the city. Will thou also destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous which are therein? That be far from thee to do after this manner to slay the righteous with the wicked and that the righteous should be as the wicked that be far from thee shall not the judge of all the earth do right 26 and the lord said if i find in sodom 50 righteous within the city then i will spare all the place for their six 27 and abraham answered and said Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak to the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. Peradventure, there shall lack five of the fifty righteous. Will thou destroy all the city for lack of five? And he said, if I find there forty and five, I will not destroy it. 29, and he spake unto him yet again and said, peradventure, there shall be 40 found there. And he said, I will not do it for 40 sake. 30. And he said unto him, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Peradventure, there shall 30 be found there. And he said, I will not do it if I find 30 there. Thirty-one, And he said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. Peradventure, there shall be twenty found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for twenty sake. Thirty-two, And he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak yet but this once. Peradventure, ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it. For ten seek. And the Lord went his way as soon as he had left communing with Abraham, and Abraham returned unto his place. All right, so let's see how this plays out now. Uh huh. Chapter 19. Let's see how this goes. And there came two angels. Oh dear. Hmm. Two angels to Sodom at even, evening, right? And Lot sat at the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. Okay, Lot. All right, again, not taking anything for granted. Lot is Abraham's nephew. So now we see, right, the concern of Abraham there. Because God told Abraham, I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abraham knew that his nephew and his family lived there. So that is why, you know, he was begging so much, at least part of it. I mean, who wants to see destruction regardless? But also, he thought about his nephew. So we see this source, you know, 
main source of his concern. All right, let's see how it goes. Verse two. And he said, behold now, my lords, turn in. I pray you, note the difference in address here with this visitation. And now he said, behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house and tarry all night and wash your feet and ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly and they turned in unto him and entered into his house. And he made them a feast and did bake unleavened bread and they did eat. Verse four. But before they lay down, oh dear, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, come past the house round both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they call unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. Oh boy, okay. All right, a little note about biblical language here. This word know and its iteration new, anything like that, has more than one meaning. Especially. <laughs> That's especially poignant in this case here, all right? When they say, bring them unto us that we may know them, they do not mean bring them here so we can ask them their names and where they're from. That's not the know they're talking about. When you see know or knew in the Bible, note, of course, your context. But one of the meanings is sexual relations, right? That's what it is, physical relations. Aha, uh -huh. so quite a picture is being painted here. One and two, the mystery. Oh my goodness, why would God destroy Sodom? Oh boy. As we read, that mystery will dissipate. Hmm. All right, verse six. <sighs> And Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Verse 8, behold now, I have two daughters. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Behold now, I have two daughters which have not known man. Again, the no. So you know what he means here. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing, for therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. Really, Lot, that's your solution. Mm, all right, we'll come back to, <laughs> we'll come back to this. Nine, and they said, stand back. Ooh. And they said again, this one fellow came into sojourn, and he will needs be a judge. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them. Oh boy. And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. My goodness. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut the door, 11. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door, was 12. And the men said unto Lot, hast thou here any besides son-in-law, sons, daughters, and whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place. Verse 13, for we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxen great before the face of the Lord and the Lord had sent us to destroy it. 14, and Lot went out and spoke unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters and said, 
up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. Such a pity when you try to warn people of danger and they laugh at you. My goodness. Verse 15. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife, take thy two daughters which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. The 16. And while he lingered, the man laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and sent him without the city. 17, and it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, escape for thy life. Look not behind thee. Make note of that. It's going to come back in a little while. Neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. Mm. Eighteen, and Lot said unto them, Oh, not so, my Lord. Behold now, thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy which thou hast shown unto me in saving my life. And I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me and I die. Oh boy, drama king. 20, behold now, this city is near to flee unto, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. 21, and he said unto him, see, I have accepted thee, concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city for which thou hast spoken. 22, haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou become thither. You need to get out now, it's coming. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zoar. 23, the sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zoar. Then the Lord rained, ooh, rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. 25. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him. Didn't they just say, don't look back? Hmm. Disobedience gets us into all types of trouble. And she became a pillar of salt. However you interpret that, not good. Hmm. Twenty-seven. And Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord. And he looked towards Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the plain and beheld and lo, the smoke of the country went up as the smoke of a furnace. Owie. That whole thing was probably quite a Quite a sight to behold. Wow. 29. And it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in the which Lot dwelt. 30. And Lot went up out of Zoar and dwelt in the mountain and his two daughters with him. For he feared to dwell in Zoar, and he dwelt in a cave, he and his two daughters. So what we see here 
now <laughs> arguably you know extreme circumstances maybe but the point is what do we have a showcase of how low the flesh can go that is what we are being shown here when man tries to live and make decisions outside of the dictates of God, this is the type of thing we end up with. So the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, as you can see, it was just a matter of, okay, enough is enough, enough is enough. The level of depravity and sin and, oh. Two men are passing through the city and they're not safe. Who is safe? Can any woman walk that street safe? My goodness, is any child safe? What a society and God, okay, enough, enough, enough. And judgment, judgment, judgment rain down. And even the people who were considered righteous, even their decision-making is questionable. Why? Flesh, 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 just operating in flesh. And we will see here, I'm setting you up for this that we're going to read here. <laughs> Brace yourself. Lot's two daughters, well, one of them at least, fancies herself clever. You know, sometimes it's like that. We are clever, aren't we? And we can figure things out. God, we got this. We, we have a plan. Mm -hmm. All right, let's finish reading the chapter 31. And the firstborn said unto the younger, our father is old, and there is not a man in the earth to come in unto us after the manner of all the earth, right? Come in unto us. Another euphemism for physical relations, right? So we're in this cave. We'll be here forever. We will never get out, and no one will ever come in. Uh-huh. Where is she going with this? Oh, my goodness. Verse 32. Come, let us make our father drink wine. And we will lie with him. My goodness. We will lie with him. We will lie with. Lie with. Another euphemism for physical relations. That we may preserve seed of our father. Oh, a noble goal, is it not? It's so noble. Right. Reading on. And they made their father drink wine that night. And the firstborn went in and lay with her father. And he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. So he had no idea what was going on. That he was drunk. Very, very drunk. Thirty-four. And it came to pass on the morrow that the firstborn said unto the younger, Behold, I lay yesterday night with my father. Let us make him drink wine this night also, and go thou in and lie with him that we may preserve seed of our father. Okay, so this is a slogan. This is, yeah, mm -hmm, right. 35, and they made their father drink wine that night also. And the younger arose and lay with him. And he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. 36, thus were both the daughters of Lot with child by their father. 37, hmm. and the firstborn bare a son and called his name Moab, 
the same is the father of the Moabites unto this day. And the younger, she also bare a son and called his name ben -Ami. The same is the father of the children of Ammon unto this day. Moab and Ammon are two significant names that pop up in the Old Testament a fair bit. The Moabites and the Ammonites were two groups of enemies of the children of Israel, of God's people. And the Moabites in particular were known for some really depraved type of paganism. So you see, sometimes when we take it on ourselves to solve problems without consulting God, we end up creating more problems than we solve. Hmm. All right, so what were we just reading? Goodness me, what on earth were we just reading, right? Okay, so sure you figured out by now, we're looking at Sodom and Gomorrah, which as I mentioned, comes up in other parts of the Bibles, referenced, right? One way or another. The Lord, well, three men, interesting, hmm, visited Abraham and Sarah, and they told Abraham, that he was going to have his promised son soon. Wow, that's another story. And again, another incident of humans acting in the flesh because God is not quick enough and maybe God doesn't have it figured out and we need to figure it out for him. Yes, another situation that created a mess in the future too. Another story for another day. Anyhow. So they had two orders of business visiting Abraham to tell him about his promised son. And they also warned him that they were going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, which as we saw, and we got a little tiny glimpse. All right, I'm not even going to imagine day-to-day -day life, the scenes in that place anyway. But there were cities full of gross, unfettered, depravity. And the Lord just said, enough is enough. Please note though, the mercy of God, even while handing down judgment. We normally associate the mercy and the grace of God with the New Testament, which we should. But the Old Testament shows God's mercy. Abraham was concerned about his nephew, and as we saw, the Lord indeed was willing, more than willing, to be merciful. But justice had to be done. Since, well, for sure God knew there were not even 10 righteous in there, right? So depraved can we get, look at that. A mob was trying to barge into Lot's house to violate the men that were visiting. My word, this is where the flesh can go. That is why we always need to check ourselves. And of course, as Christians, we have a lot of good help. We have the Holy Spirit living in us who will lead us and convict us. Because what you should observe over time, things you used to do, things that were okay, things that were no big deal, all of a sudden, why should I do that? This doesn't feel right. Something's not the same. Yes, sanctification and the Holy Spirit working in us, orienting us toward God. But when we go the opposite direction, away from God, and everything is just flesh, 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 like we saw in the account, everybody just making decisions on their flesh, 
it's just a tangled web you can find yourself in. Yeah. And note also, yeah, just what we're talking about, lots of problem solving, purely flesh-powered pragmatism. Well, I'm faced with two options that are both evil, so I pick the less evil one. Well, how about we pick none of the above? <laughs> how about we don't pick any path of sin instead of trying to rationalize which is better than the other? I don't believe that Lot thought that giving his daughters to the mob like rabid mob of pools was good. But he reasoned in his mind, all in his flesh. It's not good, but it's better than the alternative. <laughs> so Lot's daughters also some problem solving, some flesh powered pragmatism. Well, it's just my sister and I and my father in this cave. We have to raise seed to our father because if we never have children, you know, that will be the end of my father's seed, uh, blah, 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 whatever. Now, don't get me wrong, not making excuses, but let's consider where did they grow up exactly? And let that be a lesson to us, you know. We may be really disgusted by what we just read that they did, but think about it. Where did they grow up? Where do we live? As Jesus said in John 17, we have not taken them out of this world. It would be really something if as soon as we were saved, we were suddenly caught up in the air and went to heaven. Mm, not quite. We're here, we remain here for the time that the Lord will have us here. We're surrounded by sin. We're surrounded by people who are not saved and who sin and sin and don't care left and right, sin and sin, no big deal, that's okay, it doesn't hurt anybody, sin, 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 they don't care. And they insist that we approve, or at least not express any disapproval, you know. You know? <laughs> and in the midst of, a, of that, we have to stay close to the Lord, draw close to the Lord, walk in the spirit, saturate our minds and souls with the word because sometimes it's sad to say i suppose it would show up like in crisis situations like what we saw you may not realize sometimes how your sinful environment may actually be penetrating you to some extent and then you find yourself wait hold on what did i just say what am I doing? What? Mm -hmm. So we have to always be mindful and on guard, right? The end justifies the means. This is one of the phrases, you know, I don't like at all. I don't like to hear this. The end justifies the means. That's a dangerous, dangerous road to go down. Because it would appear that's where the girls' heads were. You're playing with fire with that. You're playing with fire. Whatever goal I have, is God pleased with it? How I get there, Lord, do you approve of my path that I believe is so foolproof and, you know, brilliant is it right lord i want to do the right thing not the wrong thing that's where our head should be as christians the end justifies it means 
Yeah, that's trouble. That's trouble. Now, remember the last example they witnessed. Oh, wasn't their father prepared to toss them out to the mob? Because that seemed like the better of the two evils and acceptable because it's a crisis. So that's the example they just saw. So again, as Christians, we are light, we are salt, people are watching. I mean, wisdom and balance. It's not always productive to just live for other people, if you understand what I'm saying. I'm just saying again, wisdom and balance. We name the name of the Lord. People are watching. The Mosaic law wasn't handed down yet. Let's, let's consider that. Maybe they would have done differently or maybe not. Because even after the law was handed down in the Old Testament, we see all sorts of craziness still taking place. All right. So let's just have a glimpse of Leviticus 18 on that note. All right, so if we look now at Leviticus 18 in relation to what we were just discussing, we pull out a couple things here. So, of course, okay, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy is a section of the Bible known as the law. Now, that word law, yes, brings a particular connotation, does it not? So we see here in this chapter, one of the many instances where Moses is relaying the law that was handed down by God, All right? Um, speak unto the children of Israel, verse two, and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwell, shall ye not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, where I bring you, shall ye not do neither shall he walk in their ordinances. In the New Testament, this is nicely summed up in a phrase. We are in the world, but not of the world. We are here, we function here in this system. We live day to day here, yes, sure. But be wary that sometimes, Sometimes we have to step outside of what everyone considers good and normal if, if it clashes with what the Lord, our God, wants. If God doesn't like it, I'm not going near it. Yeah. Okay, at least that's what I try to do. That's my MO, right? All right, so in this chapter, uh, what do they deal with? From verse six, as you see, incest. <laughs> yes, exactly, incest, incest. Now, oh, let's look here at verse seven. The nakedness of thy father, or the nakedness of thy mother shall thou not uncover. Yet another euphemism for physical relations, uncovering the nakedness of, uh, right. Well, here we go. The nakedness of thy father shall thou not uncover. No matter how pragmatic you think you need to be, it's wrong, 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 wrong. What we saw a minute ago that Lot's daughters did was wrong, 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 wrong. But again, they were operating in the flesh. Oh, this is, we have a problem, let's solve it. There was no law handed to them. Again, this is the other thing. 
the New, Test New Testament sums it up. It's by the law that we know sin. Yeah, right? It's by the law that we know sin. All right, so down to verse 18. Very detailed speaks about incest. Thou shall not, thou shall not, thou shall not, thou shall not. Of course, that's where God would come from when it comes to something like incest. Oh, my. All right, what else is relevant to what we were dealing with? Actually, verse 22, right? Sodom and Gomorrah, we were just reading about. What did we almost, well, what almost happened? Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. Abomination. Lie with, again, another euphemism for physical relations. It's an abomination to God. Thou shalt not. That's God's response to it, right? All right, so none of you shall, thou shalt not know the language, right? If that is an objective, well, what is, right? Objective, right and wrong, black and white, as the saying goes. The tone is not consistent with, let's debate and meet in the middle. No, not exactly, right? Now, there is a passage in the Bible where God says, come now and let us reason together. Not here, not in the law. Another section of the Bible, not the law. None of you shall and thou shalt not is the language of the law, right? Uh, that's why we're in so much trouble because we cannot keep all of that. We, again, our flesh, our flesh. You see the trouble our flesh can cause. So I have some scripture references here. Again, it's in your interest to inundate your mind, your soul, your spirit on a daily basis. A few verses in a day will not cut it. Just my humble advice. We're talking chapters, at least a couple chapters a day is what we should aim for. My program I offer to you is five chapters a day. So that took some planning. I've been following that program for many years, many, many years. And it took me getting up extra, extra early in the morning to have time to make sure I read my five chapters. But the bottom line is a couple of verses. I'm not saying don't read the devotionals or whatever. I used to do that a lot, but a few verses here and there. Mm -mm. It's not going to keep you afloat as you would want to. We're talking at least a couple chapters a day. If you think, you know, my proposal of five is too much for you for whatever reason, you're very busy people or whatever, but I would strongly advise at least a couple chapters a day of Bible reading, right? So there's some references there. What we will read together is the Galatians 5 one. I think that's a nice note to go off on. All right, so let's have a look at a piece of Galatians chapter five. We take it up from verse 13. All right, for brethren, Ye have been called unto liberty. Only use liberty, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. Well, yes, exactly. Just as a few sessions ago, remember we saw in Romans 6 where Paul is saying, 
Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. No, that's not the way it works at all. That's not what God is expecting from us. No. Right? But use your liberty, because we do have liberty. We are freed from the condemnation of the law. By love, serve one another. 14. For the law is fulfilled in one word, even this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And yes, that is in the law too. Thou shalt. So this is a affirmative command. We saw a lot of thou shalt not. But this is one telling you do something. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So a page out of the Lord's book. The Lord sees abomination. He's disgusted. That's what abomination means. Abomination means something that you find utterly disgusting and that you have a strong hatred. If you look at the um, dictionary meaning, hatred. I mean, it's absolutely reprehensible to God, our sin. And well, that one sin was singled out and called abomination in particular, right? God sees all our sins and misdeeds and we're cloaked in the righteousness of Christ. So we are saved, hence the word, right? Saved from eternal consequences of our sin. Thank God. But if we sin while we're here and we're walking with the Lord, and it can happen, you know, because we're fallen creatures. It can happen. You will pay for it in your flesh. You will pay for it in this life. Don't get it twisted. You will pay for it here. But the eternal consequences have been absolved. Thank God for that. But God looks down at the world and sees all our sin, the stench of our sin. It stinks. But he loves us. He loves us. He loves us. And in the same way, we have remained in the world and we are surrounded by people who have not accepted God's gift of salvation. And they sin and they sin and they don't care. They see nothing. Oh, nothing's wrong with that. It doesn't affect anybody. Ugh. But we're commanded to love, to love them, to love our brethren that are saved and regenerated like us, and to love those who aren't. Love your enemies. Oh, boy. We have the Spirit of God living in us, so it can happen. Take some doing. <laughs> some of us more than others but it can happen we are commanded to still love them and to try to reach them you know if we can you know reach them with the gospel so that they themselves can be saved from the eternal consequence of all that sin that they thought they enjoy so much 15, but if we bite and devour one another, right? So he's writing to a church, so, you know, they were apparently biting at each other. Figuratively speaking, of course. Take heed that you be not consumed one of another, right? Fighting, infighting is counterproductive. Eh. 16, this I say then, walk in the spirit, big S. Walk in the spirit, that ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Let the Holy Spirit take precedent. The Holy Spirit and your spirit, as we see in 17. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. Oh, yes. And these are contrary one to another, to one to another, you bet. So that ye cannot do the things that you would. 18. But if ye be led of the spirit, Lord, I really want to do the right thing. I don't want to do the wrong thing. Am I going right? Am I going wrong? Please show me, correct me accordingly. Right? But if you be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. 
19. Ooh. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. What are the works of the flesh? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness. Yeah, we saw that earlier too, right? Hmm. Revelings and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Right? Works of the flesh. When you're in the flesh and you're unregenerate, that's the type of things you do. They come naturally to you. Some of them feel normal and just fine. Yeah. 22. But the fruit of the spirit, big S, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit like we are, what should come out of us? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, Against such, there is no law. Nothing's wrong with any of that. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. Flesh is way down the priority list, right? Yes, 25. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Lord, I want to do the right thing not the wrong thing. Please guide me. Please reroute me if I'm going down the wrong path. Because so sometimes I can be, ooh, the problem solver. That my plan is akin to what we saw. You know? <laughs> you understand what I mean? Yes, the Lord has given us wisdom and wants us to make decisions and, you know, plan, yes, and solve problems. However, we need him to have the last word. If you understand what I'm saying, you consult with the Lord. It will just run off to the, make sure the Lord is part, is a member of the decision-making committee, you know? Let us not be desirous of being glory, provoking one another, envying one another, right? Let's just counsel to our church who are kind of poking at each other, it seems like. Indeed, indeed. So we will end off here. I forget this is a nice note to end with. So it's a daily, walking with the Lord is a daily, daily, something daily. Um, scripture said, take up thy cross daily and follow the Lord. That's how we will grow in the Lord. So, the Lord bless you and keep you. I pray that he will. Hope to see you again real soon. <laughs>